Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, the numbers are coming in on Mayweather Pacquiao, and folks, they're beyond expectation. Understand that this fight is going to break the record in boxing history for the most pay-per-view buys by several. Wow, this is shaking me up here. By several hundred thousand views. Right? Understand, this is going to be a record setter on a huge level. Now, on the heels of that... You're going to have a fight in an exotic location, Minute Maid Park in Houston, where the Houston Astros play, between one of the most popular fighters in the sport, Saul Alvarez. Understand how popular he is. Up until Mayweather Pacquiao, Alvarez participated with Floyd Mayweather in the record-setting pay-per-view promotion, right? Understand you're going to have Saul Alvarez, and he's going to be going up against James Kirkland. And folks, this is happening on HBO. You don't have to pay pay-per-view to see this match, right? Obviously, it has a lot of people across the country spilling coffee like I've just done. Let me work through the pain here, and let me continue with this video. For the gamblers, let me say this. Canelo Kirkland. Right? Rather than pick a side here, and I know Canelo's a big favorite, I'm going to bet distance. I don't believe this fight goes the distance. Now, the way I'm going to play it to get leverage on the casino, right? Not because I think, in particularly, everyone, you know, anyone's going to win the fight. I'm not picking a side here. But the way I'm going to bet it to get leverage from the casino is to take the underdog, James Kirkland, to win the fight, hedged with Saul Alvarez, the favorite, by KO. Right? Understand. If either happens, I'm getting better than even money odds on the winning prop. Right? The hedge works, because, before I, because since I'm getting greater than plus 100 on the winning prop, I can structure the bet. So I'm on both sides of the bet, and I make a profit. But understand what this means. It means that if the favorite, Saul Alvarez, wins this fight by decision, then you lose it all. Let's talk about the styles of the fighters. Right? First, Saul Alvarez. He has an offensive game similar to Vladimir Klitschko's with a couple of wrinkles. First, let's talk about the similarities. He has a very nice stiff jab. He has an excellent, excellent left hook. This left hook is on par with Vladimir Klitschko's left hook. I encourage you to look at the Canelo Carlos Baldemir ending, right? Like Vladimir Klitschko, at least old Klitschko, not so much new Klitschko, Canelo likes to stand upright, not a lot of slickness, doesn't really swivel his hips, doesn't bend at the waist. He stands upright, he has a puncher's mindset, right? The puncher sees themselves as the hunter, not the hunted, right? Canelo, in my opinion, isn't really prepared to operate if he gets hurt, right? He's accustomed to being the one doing the hurting. He also has, just like Vladimir Klitschko, an absolutely spectacular straight right hand. Now, here are the wrinkles that separate him from Vladimir Klitschko, that make him vulnerable, that make him prone to getting knocked out by aggressive front foot heavy fighters like James Kirkland, right? Don't be fooled by the fact that some Canelo fights have gone the distance, right? Erislandy Lara didn't stick around the pocket long enough to push for a knockout against Saul Alvarez. 
Fighters like Floyd Mayweather are hard to find in the ring. Mayweather didn't push the issue enough to knock out Saul Alvarez. That's not going to be the dynamic with James Kirkland. Right? Kirkland's going to push the issue. If Kirkland has a guy in front of him who looks like he could go, that's the direction Kirkland's going to go in. So let's talk about things that make Canelo vulnerable, that separate him from Vladimir Klitschko. The first is that Canelo can't clinch like Klitschko. In other words, when that opponent comes forward out of the pocket and tries to, you know, bum rush you, Vladimir Klitschko can tuck you under an underarm. He doesn't have to throw punches. He can just tie you up. Saul Alvarez can't. That's a big hole in his game. Because when the other guy steps forward with ammo, Saul Alvarez is going to find himself in a shootout. Let's also say another obvious factor. It's going to upset some people here. Saul Alvarez is not the athlete. Alexa, off. Saul Alvarez is not the athlete that Vladimir Klitschko is. Understand, Vladimir Klitschko tends to be taller than most of his opponents. Vladimir Klitschko, whatever you think of his boxing skills, is usually a better athlete than most of his opponents. What do I mean by that? I mean, Vladimir Klitschko has superior stamina. Right? In the later rounds of fights, even against young, aggressive opponents like a Brian Jennings, you don't worry too much about Vladimir Klitschko running out of gas. Right? He has stamina. He has endurance. This is the version of Vladimir Klitschko post Lehman Brewster. Right? Also, Klitschko moves better than most of his opponents. Right? Klitschko at times can actually get up on his toes and move around the ring if he wants. Right? Klitschko is very nimble. If they were at the decathlon in the sport of boxing, Klitschko would be among the top finishers in the heavyweight division. Now Saul Alvarez, by contrast, gets tired in fights. He takes off minutes of rounds. Even in fights, he's dominating. The Alfredo Angulo fight. He's dominating Angulo, who comes in the fight and lacks stamina himself in that fight. Doesn't look like Alfredo Angulo. Looks shop-worn in that fight. Canelo lands some big punches in that fight. But then Canelo, in some rounds, curiously retreats to the ropes. He can't fight the full three minutes. Now this is disheartening because keep in mind, Vladimir Klitschko's in his late 30s. Canelo's in his 20s. Right? Canelo has an old man part of his game where after he throws a few big punches, he needs to rest. He needs to pace himself. So you'll notice in that Alf Alfredo Angulo fight, you'll notice that even though Angulo's not on his A-game that night, so much so that one Manuel Marquez on Golpe a Golpe actually says, hey, you know, that wasn't Alfredo Angulo that night. Right? Angulo, who comes in having an off night, doesn't have it, who's getting hit with bombs and who's barely hanging on at times, curiously has Canelo up on the ropes. Right? Curiously, has moments in rounds where he's getting dominated, where he's on his front foot, and Canelo is the one retreating. Right? Take a look, too, at the Austin Trout fight. Look at the CompuBox numbers. Now, the story that fight was that Canelo flashed some head movement, right? Isn't there a moment in that fight where Austin Trout comes forward on Canelo, and Canelo is, you know, slipping punches, and he's back on the ropes, right? Just understand, though, that the key word in that sentence is back, 
right? He's back on the ropes. He's taking part of the round off. The copy box numbers are going to show that Austin Trout threw much more volume than Canelo. Right? Another problem with Canelo is he lacks foot speed. Right? Look at Vladimir Klitschko. There's no question about his foot speed. Right? Vladimir Klitschko can actually move around the ring. He's 6'6", and he moves. Right? Saul Alvarez, who's a shorter fighter, doesn't move much around the ring. Now, you add it up, and you have a guy who's going to be around the pocket. In my opinion, he does have superior power to James Kirkland. In my opinion, he is the more refined fighter than James Kirkland, right? But I feel Canelo's going to be standing around the pocket, right? Without the ability to clinch an opponent, without the survival skills, right? He's not a guy who, in my opinion, is prepared to be badly hurt in the ring and then to survive. He's not a guy who's going to prolong the round. Now let's talk about James Kirkland. The red flags are out. First thing you need to know about Kirkland is that there's a rumor that when he was approached for this fight, he weighed well north of the weight limit. That he's going to have to spend training camp losing weight. Right? Understand that's terrible because that's what leads to fighters entering the ring looking sluggish. Right? Go back and look at the scoring of the Roberto Duran Ray Leonard fight. Right? Understand the rematch. Understand Duran had to lose a lot of weight for that match. As it was on a night widely considered to be one of the biggest nights of Ray Leonard's career, understand Roberto Duran is within two rounds of Ray Leonard. At the time he quits due to a stomach problem, right? He says no moss, right? No moss box because supposedly he has a stomach problem. Right? Understand, Duran, a highly skilled fighter, even that night was winning rounds. That fight was closer than how we remember it. Duran's not dominated. He's within two rounds of Ray Leonard, with more than two rounds to go in the fight. Right? But the weight loss had him feeling less than himself. Right? The weight loss had him feeling sluggish. Sometimes you can have skills, but your body's just not ready because you've just spent the last eight weeks losing double-digit pounds to make weight. And now you're in a very demanding athletic contest. You want to pay very close attention to how James Kirkland looks at the weigh-in. Right? Very close attention. Even if he makes weight, if he comes in looking drawn, looking drained, you need to proceed with caution. That's why I don't like Kirkland as a side here to win the fight. Don't get me wrong. Because I believe there's going to be a knockout and because I want leverage on the casino, those are the only reasons. Why my suggested play here is Kirkland win hedged with Canelo, right, by KO. Those are my only reasons. I might as well get Kirkland by decision if I'm getting better than even money odds as part of a profitable hedge. But understand, I don't expect Kirkland to be in top condition, right? I think weight loss, you know weakens your chin, weakens your stamina, weakens your game, puts you behind on the scorecards, right? The other problem with Kirkland is his chin isn't what we think it is, is it? The Ishida fight, 
Kirkland hits the canvas multiple times early. I know he's the Mandingo warrior. He looks like the big bad wolf from Little Red Riding Hood. Okay, great. Right? Bottom line is a light hitting puncher hit him on the chin a couple of times. James Kirkland hit the canvas. You think that's a fluke? He fights Alfredo Angulo. He hits the canvas early in that fight. Right? Don't let the hard looks fool you. Kirkland looks tough. No question about it. He doesn't look so tough when he hits the canvas. Right? Understand, too, Kirkland has no, no back foot game. He's a smotherer. He has to come forward. He has to force the action. Right? So he's going to be coming forward on a puncher. Canelo, one of the secrets to Canelo, is that he's one of the hardest punching men in boxing. Right? Canelo's had numerous fights where he starts a little bit sluggish. Right? Um, the Jose Cito Lopez fight. He starts a little bit sluggish. Other guy starts to get on a roll. Alfonso Gomez. Right? Canelo starts a little sluggish. Cotto's brother. Right? Canelo starts sluggish. Then the punching power takes over. Right? Usually by the middle rounds, the other guy is severely hurt. The other guy is stopped. Here you don't have Erislandy Lara, who's going to be moving away from the pocket. You don't have Floyd Mayweather. You have a guy who's going to be right in front of him trying to press the action. Right? So, with, by the way, a dodgy chin. Both of these guys might have dodgy chins. I encourage you to go back to the opening rounds of Cotto's brother against Canelo. Canelo's hurt, folks. He's barely hanging on in that fight. You're going to notice that his chin's not unbreakable. You're going to notice that when he's hurt, he doesn't have great survival skills. Right? So, I'm expecting a stoppage in this fight. Right? I am. But rather than just take the, you know, stoppage prop, because of the odds, why don't I also get Kirkland simply to win the fight? Right? So if it goes to a decision, and if Kirkland gets the decision, then I'm still in line with the other gamblers collecting at the end of the fight. So, the bet I'm recommending, since I believe the outcome is going to be a stoppage, is James Kirkland to win the fight. Hedged with Saul Alvarez by KO. Right? Let me add this caveat. James Kirkland, curiously, and I consider this one of the worst decisions I've heard in recent memory, won't have Ann Wolf in his corner for this fight. Right? Understand, after the Ashita disaster, Kirkland reunited with Ann Wolf, And together, the two of them were able to beat Alfredo Angulo in Mexico. Right? Ann Wolf is the one with the unorthodox training techniques that had James Kirkland physically more prepared than his opponents for many of his fights. Now, given that Kirkland has no back foot game, isn't a refined boxer, is really a front foot heavy smotherer who's hoping to mentally break you and to land big punches on his front foot. I believe it's crucial that he have the right trainer in his corner who is adept at developing that part of his game. Now this fight reminds me in a way of George Grove's Carl Frotch in that George Groves broke with Adam Booth, and I would argue, by the way, that George Groves is not the same fighter since he broke with Adam Booth, right? He broke with Adam Booth right before fighting Carl Frotch, right? He didn't have one of the main members 
of his team with him for that fight. And George Groves left it on the table. Right here, you have a similar situation. This is the biggest fight of James Kirkland's career. And you mean to tell me now's the time he's decided to break with his trainer, Ann Wolf? Let's just say I question that decision, right? I don't think Kirkland is going to have the familiarity with his trainer and his team in moments of crisis that he would have had if he had his longtime trainer in his corner. So I'm expecting a stoppage here. This is going to be very different than Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather. You're going to have Kirkland on his front foot, unafraid of Saul Alvarez, who just happens to be one of the hardest punchers in the sport, but who himself is not a great athlete and who won't know how to handle things if he gets hurt. Right? Something's got to give here. I'd, I'll be surprised if this fight goes longer than seven rounds. So I'm expecting a knockout the way I'm playing it at the casino is Kirkland to win hedged with Canelo by KO. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments here in the comment section to this video, and thanks for stopping by.